Hi, Laura. Hey. How are you? I'm good. Good. Great. Um, great. We'll just give people a minute to join. Um, while we get started, I'll introduce myself. My name is Maddie. I am the brand communications lead here at Goodbye Gear. So I'm usually the one behind the scenes on the social side of things, um, doing all our communications, influencer items, things like that. Um, and we thought with today starting National Safety Month, it would be great to have you on and talk about um, summer travel and safety tips and just making sure everyone has a really safe and fun summer. So we're really excited to get started. Um, and Thank then Laura, I'll let you introduce yourself in just a moment. Um, but Laura is a Tot Squad expert. Um, for people who are not familiar with Tot Squad, um, it is a marketplace contact connecting new and expecting parents with expert providers. Their mission is really to normalize parents asking for support, um, such as, you know, sleep training a baby, again, travel tips, breastfeeding, car seat insulation, everything. There's so many new things to learn um, when you're having a child. So Tot Squad is really there to help. Um, and for anyone who would like to book time with Laura, they can do so at totsquad.com. Um, so Laura, would you introduce yourself for everyone? Like she said, my name is Laura Coleman. I am a firefighter paramedic, um, mainly retired, mainly teach now. Um, but I've been in public safety for the last 20 years, working with injury prevention with safe kids. Um, um, like I said, a paramedic. I've also worked some with law enforcement, CPR instructor. And I've also been a, a car seat tech instructor for the last um, about 10 years now. So I'm married, been married now for the last 20 years. And I've got a 17-year-old daughter and a 13-year-old daughter. Great. So you have lots of experience across the board. <laughs> I do. Okay, great. Um, and for anyone who's joined, um, we're about to get into a Q&A. So if anyone has friends or family who might be interested in this topic, now would be a great time to um, tag them in the comments or um, DM this over to them so they can join. And for anyone who is not able to join, we will um, reshare this to both Goodbye Gear and Tot Squad's accounts. So you can go back and watch later as well. Okay, let's see. Um, I think let's kick it off with um, just some, what are the top safety concerns with travel when traveling with a toddler? Well, it's also going to depend on how you're traveling. So, of course, if you're traveling by car, you want to make sure that your car seat is actually checked before you go or make sure that you've actually learned how to put it in correctly. Um, almost all the seats that we see, we find something that we can help a parent out with. So, and especially with Tot Squad, you can um, work with us through there and we can help you with that. Um, if you're flying, a lot of parents are like, oh, I want to go cheaper, so I don't want to have them in their own seat. I'd rather have them on my lap. Um, that is actually a lot less safe because you want to keep them in the same way that they would actually travel in the vehicle. Plus that makes them more used to it is the big thing. Now there are some people that may even travel by train. Um, I'm a big Amtrak type person, but there are no seatbelts at all on a train. So in order to do that, you will have to have them pretty much sitting in the seat. Now there's a lot of room, but there's no seatbelts. So you've got to take that into consideration. So, and just remember whenever you go places, a lot of times they're like, hey, we have a loaner seat. You don't know the history of that seat. Mm -hmm. So it might've been in a, um, just a fender bender. And, and you know, when it's in a fender bender, a lot of times they want them to be replaced and people don't realize that. Now, most taxis do not need to have um, car seats only because that's the legal side of it. Do you need to still travel with one? Definitely. So if you're able to take yours, but ride shares are actually required to have them. So any type of, you know, of the, the ride share types, they actually have to have them. And a lot of times they can actually turn you away for it too. But, and then check your surroundings, constantly watch your surroundings. Mm -hmm. So do you recommend, is there like a certain, age like can you travel you know if you have an infant with toddlers should you always be bringing your own car seat are there any you know kind of regulate i uh, honestly stuff? i would constantly bring my own seat until my child was sitting in the seatbelt which for my youngest one she stayed in a car seat until she was about 11 uh, up to the booster seat but a lot of times too especially when you get into the boosters they make some of them so much smaller nowadays that they're so much easier to carry so i mean that is an option okay great that's helpful thank you 
many uh, modes of transportation this summer now that everything's uh, back up and running. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so for all these families traveling this summer, what would be your like top safety tips anywhere from like, I don't know if you have a top one or two you usually go by, if you have a handful of them. Um, um, a lot of time is just do your research ahead of time. So doing your research before you fly, making sure that they actually will allow a, a larger car seat on there. See what the regulations are about even stowing uh, strollers, whatever. Um, the other big thing is be prepared. Um, a lot of times, you know, you're like, oh, I've got extra for my kid, I got extra for my toddler, but do you have an extra shirt for yourself for whenever that's that one time that they squeeze the applesauce and it goes all over your shirt and now you have to show up at your in-law's house and you've got this huge stain on your shirt. So, you know, make sure that you have as much as you possibly can. Um, and just talk to your child about it beforehand. Make sure that they kind of understand um, some things that they may see. So that way, whenever you say, hey, listen, you're gonna have to see pilots. They're the ones that fly the planes. Then you can look out the window and talk about the plane, the people putting the luggage in the bottom. It makes it more fun for them and you're allowing them to understand and see patterns. And so that is a, a big part of that. But anytime you travel with a child, make sure to keep things as normal as you possibly can. And everyone's like, how in the world do we do that? Even keeping things for their naps at about the same time. A lot of people are like, should I travel in the morning? Should I travel in the evening? Murphy's Law is gonna hit you no matter what time you travel. Um, a lot of times I would like to travel with them so that way they could sleep overnight. But either way, if you travel during the day and try to keep them awake or travel at night and try to get them to sleep, Whenever you get to your destination, don't plan something right away. Give mm -hmm. everyone a downtime because it's going to be relatively stressful no matter what you do. Great. And um, aside from, you know, everyone's routine getting thrown off a little, or there's no, like, you know, safety concerns around that. It's more so just regulating them to kind of get back on track and make sure everyone has a great trip. A lot of it, and um, there could be just some, especially if they take any type of medications and they have to eat with them. Or, I mean, if you know your child and you know that if they don't get that nap at one o'clock in the afternoon, mm -mm, it's gonna be all heck, right? <laughs> so, I mean, sometimes it could be the safety of even the other people that are on the airplane. Because of course you're gonna be attempting um, to give them, especially when you're taking off, um, for the pressure, giving them something to eat or something to suck on, like a, a pacifier or whatever they're using. And of course, you know, snacks, snacks, and more snacks um, is pretty much the key to about any travel, just to kind of keep them, them going. Sometimes it might be something to keep their hands moving while they're trying to get a snack as well, or just giving them a, um, a new toy that is just for that trip. Maybe it's a stuffed airplane or um, a stuffed train to kind of recognize that that's what that trip was from. That's a great idea. I love that. Um, kind of to that point, um, what would you suggest is like a must, like your must pack items when traveling? Did I say you? snacks? Yes. I said <laughs> snacks, right? Okay. Um, definitely <laughs> snacks. Um, of course, you know, the wet wipes and sanitizing wipes. Always pack extra um, zip close bags. That'll be the time that something spills. You'll get a wet outfit that you'll need to put in there always have extra of those um even the disposable changing pads and other first aid items and fever reducer especially if they've had vaccinations anytime within the last week definitely that can make them a little bit more moody but um definitely give them some extra um keep some extra fever reducer with you and then of course the clothes and for the love of everything good if your child is using something that makes noise, make sure it has headphones, please. <laughs> From every other passenger on the plane. <laughs> yeah, so our, uh, yeah, leave that toy at home. <laughs> All right. um, I think this is probably a tricky question and there's probably no right answer, but is there a best age to travel with a toddler? You've got to at least try to get them used to it. Maybe take some small trips to begin with. Um, it doesn't matter if you start at infant or you start at four. If it's not part of the routine and they don't understand what's going on, mm -hmm. it's not going to go well. 
okay? Um, they thrive on routine, toddlers especially. They start seeing patterns, and once they find those patterns, they understand what's coming next. So if you totally throw them off, that's when they get at more agitated typically. So like I said, just talk to them. Take those small trips to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, you might even be able to, depends on you know what kind of resources you have, take them to the airport and just see if there's someone that can take them on a, a private aircraft just up so they can feel that pressure difference. And then it's, it's a short trip. If Maybe if your child's had tubes put in or something and they scream, you know, hmm, let's try train or car instead. I mean, for everyone else around. So it's just a matter of, of getting them used to it or giving them things that are comfortable, which is why we especially want them to be in their own car seat on the plane because that's familiar to them and they understand what's going on whenever they're in that. Yeah, that's a great point too. So would you say if a family travels quite a bit, you suggest, you know, from, you know, very early stages, traveling frequently mm -hmm. with the child to get them more accustomed to it as opposed to waiting for that big trip? Definitely. Um, though it's always kind of interesting to me that, you know, you could be a toddler and you fall asleep and then you wake up in the grocery store. I mean, for adults, that would be totally freak us out. But especially if, hey, you know, I'm going to fall asleep or in the car when we get there, I'll probably be closer to my destination. Mm -hmm. um, and they're able to understand what's going on. So it definitely will get them more used to it and more routine and you have a better chance. Mm -hmm. That's great. And that kind of answered my other question of, you know, obviously it's a little bit stressful for toddlers to travel. Like you said, like going to sleep, waking up in one new place. Uh, <laughs> is there anything that parents might have not thought about that they can do to mitigate any sort of stress or, um, you know, make it the best trip possible? Like I said, every toddler is different. Um, every trip is different. Um, but in talking to them and getting them used to certain things and um, getting them used to small trips or um, even used to the things that they may see while doing it, you'll usually have a better trip. Um, and like I said, especially waiting for at least a week before, after vaccinations. Don't plan the vaccinations mm -hmm. and then take them out. And then, um, you know, plan on delays, especially mm -hmm. if you're going by airplane plan that there's going to be a delay. If you've got a layover, try to make it a longer layover because those um, short periods of time in between the air pressure changes can actually bother them even more. So try to have a longer layover to get your child, you know, time to rest in between those, um, those times when the air pressure might even bother them. That's a great point. And regardless if individuals are traveling by plane or train or something where they're on a little bit of a different schedule. Is there anything else you suggest they can do to make it an easier process? Like I know there's, you know, uh, family boarding on airplanes, things like that. Definitely. And a lot of people are like, no, I don't want to put my kid on that early because I'm going to bother everyone. Take the chance to get your child in there, get them settled before everyone else gets on. Um, if you're able to do the TSA pre-check, do that. Um, put as much as you can um, as baggage and not stuff that you're carrying through the, the airport itself or onto the train itself. Um, the other thing with trains, I mean, they are, they are wonderful because you can actually get up and move around on the train. But just remember, you know, a lot of times you're going to have to carry them and, and, and be safe doing that. And a lot of times people like to um, wear even the, some of the older kids as long as they're still small enough for that. Um, but those are some of the biggest things is to make sure that you're actually get on, you get prepared, get them used to that area first. That's great. Um, I just saw a comment coming through along the lines of flying, um, that when you put car seats on the plane, they have to be in a window seat. Is that accurate? I wasn't aware of that. Um, you just need to check with the different airlines. Typically that's where they do want them just because, um, especially if it's going to be rear facing, it's harder to get the, the car seat and get up and around them. So you may want to check that. You also need to check what placement you have your, um, you guys like some seats are restricted just for adults in case of emergencies. Mm. So like I said, check with the airlines. Um, and of course you cannot fly with a booster actually in a seat. And that's because a booster seat um, cannot go with lap belt only. You have to have something to spread out that force. 
So up through a combination seat, as long as it says on the side that it's FAA certified. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. That is good to know. I wouldn't have even thought about that along the lines of a booster seat. Um, are there any particular brands of like travel car seats or seats that you recommend in particular? Or are there usually the car before? usually the car seats that you you normally have can be used on a plane. A lot of times people might want to try something smaller or sometimes people try to go back to an infant only. Make sure that you stay within the lines of the weight restrictions, the height restrictions. Um, a lot of times you can even get the little um, carts to be able to put your car seat around. Some of the car seats fold up, it just depends. So just do mm -hmm. your research on the different car seats um, and make sure, like I said, that they have that um, certification on there that says that they're okay for the aircraft. And I'm assuming along those lines, um, you know, is there anything special parents need to know about securing them into like an air, it's going to be a lap belt only and with the lap belt it is a locking um, mechanism actually on the adjustment so whenever you put the the seat in there and then you're just going to tighten down so it'll be just a lap belt only and you don't have to worry about switching any retractors or anything like that you just put the seat belt through and then tighten it to where it doesn't move an inch side to side great awesome and then something i feel like we have skipped over a little bit is, you know, getting them to and from the airplane seat or the train seat. Do you suggest, um, you know, investing in a second travel stroller that's just for travel in particular? Do you have any recommendations there? Maybe you have two kids and you're trying to, you know, get them through the airport. It's, um, it's going to depend on how many kids you have, how many adults you have helping you. Because if you don't have anyone else helping you, you want to get the bigger ones. Um, and especially for, for traveling, though, a lot of people like to do sometimes the smaller ones just to be able to store them. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, too, people will have the people that are picking them up at the airport have a stroller for them instead. Mm. So it kind of just depends. If you've got something bigger, like you're going to go to the zoo or, or whatever, you may want something bigger. But then, like I said, you can always have that at your destination. And that's not as particular with especially... Um, you know, using loaner type things, not definitely nothing like the car seat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you suggest it's okay to do a loaner stroller. Definitely. Loaner car seat. Just look it over. I mean, if all of a sudden you see metal pieces sticking up, <laughs> that one, but I mean, <laughs> use common sense pretty much with them. Yeah. Okay, great. And are there any downsides or like safety concerns of like your stroller getting banged up if you like check it versus have one at your destination or I know like the top of the baby menu fits. With the, the strollers over pretty much as long as they still work. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, double check and, and things on that. The way that they fold up usually can kind of help secure them to themselves, mm -hmm. which makes it a whole lot easier. Definitely I would take off those other toys that can get caught on stuff. Mm -hmm. Because if you have that toy there and it gets caught going up the ramp, you know, that might damage it more. So make sure it's kind of folded up to the minimal um, size and make okay. sure it's labeled. Okay, great. Um, I think those were all of our primary questions. We'll see if anyone has any in the comments, um, but did you have anything else that you wanna to share to make sure families have a really um, safe and enjoyable summer um, traveling with their children? I'm gonna straight up tell you, children will mimic the way that you guys act. So if you guys are like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, the kids usually are that way. Mm -hmm. um, if you're calmer, usually they're that way too. No one expects things to go perfectly except for you, okay? So just remember that people that are around you, they get that you have a kid. They don't want them screaming the entire time, but you know, if they hear them a little bit, that's not gonna be a problem. So don't expect a perfect experience out of yourself or mm -hmm. your child. Yeah, I think that's a great reminder and hopefully just as stress-free as possible. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much, Laura. This was- You're very welcome. Um, as a reminder to everyone listening in, we will post this to both of Top Squad and Goodbye Gears accounts. So you can hop back in and watch if any of Laura's tips were especially helpful to you or you want a reminder. Um, and we will also make sure um, that we share Top Squad's information so that if you want to book a consult with Laura, you can do so over at topsquad.com. I hope you guys have a great summer. Thanks, you too. I'll see you. Bye, Laura.